Hello, my name is Mitchell Pearson, and in this video, you're going to see how to do something that you technically can't do in Power BI, but it's a much requested feature, and many people want to know how to do it, and that is add data labels to maps. How do I know that admit a lot of people want to do it, that it's a much requested feature? Because I wrote a blog about how to do this over six years ago, and it's one of the most popular blogs I've ever written. In fact, I even did a YouTube video on this on a different channel long ago, and so that was very popular as well. So we're doing the video again, we're doing it within the new interface of Power BI, and also on the Pragmatic Works channel so it gets a lot further reach and so more people get to see this cool tip and trick. And so what we're gonna be doing in this video is exactly what you see on the screen. This is the completed product and this is in fact a data label on a Power BI map in, in Power BI, but it is a trick, it is a workaround. It's a little bit of a tip and I'm gonna show you how to do it, but at the end, I'm also going to show you some of the limitations with this method because it is a workaround and there are some limitations. So make sure you stay to the very end so you can see what those limitations are. So what is the trick here? Well, if you want to get this kind of result, what we need to do is actually leverage the latitude and longitude capability within the Power BI map. What I did in this video is I went ahead and I just did a quick search on the web and I found a web page, the web page that you see on the screen right here that has a list of all the latitude and longitudes for each city and each state within the, or really just each state within the United States. Obviously you see the first bit of work that you have to do because what if you needed to go down to a further level? What if you needed to go down to the city level? You'd have to find a more robust data set that also shows the latitude and longitude for those individual cities, right? So this is for the method that I'm gonna show you today. This is a requirement. We need to get that latitude, get that longitude, and add it into our Power BI report. So I took the URL from the top, I cleaned this data up, and then I joined this data into my geography dimension so that I could add the latitude and longitude for each of those states within the United States within my data. All right, so if I go back over to Power BI, if I go into the data view here, go into my geography, you'll notice that I have the latitude and I have the longitude already set and ready to go on my geography dimension. And we did that back in the Power Query Editor by pulling the data in and then performing a merge operation. Now we're doing a lot of stuff in this video to make this happen. A lot of tips, a lot of tricks. Power Query Editor, pulling data in, cleaning it up, creating a calculated column in DAX. If you are new to Power BI and you realize you need to know all of those things, go to Pragmatic Works, check out our Power BI Bootcamp, check out our Advanced Power BI Bootcamp. We'd love to see you in those boot camps. It'll be great. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe to our videos here and you can see all the other free videos that we do. Now, what I'm gonna do is once I have that information there, I'm gonna go over to this completed example. And if I look at the completed example, this is the way that we would normally set up. This is the way that we would normally configure the map visual. I have this map visual in the middle and I've set up on the location, the state, the geographical location, and then on the size of the bubble, I've put that total cells measure. This is the way we would normally do it. Now that we have our latitude and longitude, we're going to do this a little bit differently. So I'm going to remove state. I'll go over to my geography dimension. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the latitude, and then I'll go ahead and bring in the longitude. And what that does is it maps each of these data points on the map. So why is this important? Because we need to use the actual location for a different purpose, as you're going to see in a moment. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna turn off the category labels. And so now we have our map. And this time now we're doing it with latitude and longitude, right? Okay. So the way that I make this work, the way that we create the data label is we actually wind up writing a calculated column on our table, a calculated column on our geography table. And what that calculated column does is it's going to do two things. It's gonna take, as you see over here, it's going to take the state from the row in the geography table and it's going to concatenate with the state the actual sum amount the total sales amount from our sales table and then that's what we're going to use as our label so this is going to be a calculated column now if you see my table here i've technically already created it but i'm going to walk through the process of creating it again um, so that you can see how we do this from scratch so i'll go ahead and say i'm going to create a new calculated column on my geography table and then we'll call this Really, I'll just give it the same name as our existing one. So we'll call it state metrics two.
There we go. And so we want to do two things here. The first thing that I want to do is I want to extract the state from my geography table. So I'm going to grab geography and then I'm going to go ahead and grab state like so. And then we'll do an ampersand sign and we're going to combine that information with, well, we'll do this. We're going to do a double quote colon space quote like so. And then we'll come down here and now we have to come up with the total sales amount. And the total sales amount is essentially the sum of sales amount for this state. But there's a lot of other filtering that's going on here. We're going to be inside what's called a row context inside of a calculated column. So we need to work around that. So I'm going to tell it, all right, I want to calculate and I already have a measure in here. My measure is actually called total sales, but I'll just type it out so you can see the code. And I'm going to calculate the sum of internet sales sales amount. So I'm summing up the sales amount from the sales table. But I do need to change the filter context. I need to say, all right, I want to calculate it for the state that's currently here. So I'm going to use a function called all accept, which will allow me to ignore all filters that are on my geography table, except for the filter on state. I want to respect the filter that's coming from state. So I'm going to do that and then I'll do that. So let's just look at the results real quick. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. So for California, we go down, we have Arizona, Colorado has no cells. Okay, that looks pretty good. So this is exactly what we wanted to get this data label working, but you'll notice my other one is formatted. And so what you can do here is you come in and you can actually format this part of the calculation right here. And I'm gonna tab that in just to actually format my DAX as well. And I'm gonna do format and then you pass in the value. So this is a value for California. This is, you know, 5.7 million. So this is the value. And then I can tell it the formatting that I want to do, which is going to be on the inside here. I'll go down. Actually, nope, that's not right. Let me see. Close the calculate first. There we go. All right. And so then I'm going to tell it, all right, the formatting that I want to do is I'm going to do a currency symbol. I'm going to do a zero, a comma, zero, zero, zero. And then we do any kind of dots. We did not. So we'll do that. We didn't do any decimal places there and hit enter. And there we go, that worked, that looks great. So Mitchell, how do we use this in our report? How do we make this work? Well, with this new metrics calculation that we just built here, what I would do is go back over to my report view. And in my report view, if I come back over to our completed example that we're working for or working towards, we can come in here and we can take that metric that we just created and put it on the location. Now, it, it breaks originally, right? If you're trying this yourself, you're like, oh, Mitchell, it broke, what happened? Well, essentially, because we now have this, in addition to this, I have to do average or some kind of aggregate on the latitude and longitude, which isn't a problem. Because technically, the latitude and the longitude for like Georgia, for example, is repeated in my geography table for every city that's in Georgia. So it is in there many times, but it's the exact same latitude and the exact same longitude every time. No question about it, right? So what I could do is a min or a max or an average. It doesn't really matter. They'll all return the same thing. So I'm just going to tell it, okay, we'll do an average. And then for lot longitude, we'll do an average as well. So same thing, same exact mapping. Everything looks the same. However, where are our labels? I said I was going to give you data labels and we don't see them. Well, there is one more piece that we need to do. The last piece to the puzzle is under formatting. We're going to come over here and click on category labels. And there it is. This is a beautiful thing. I love it. This is great. This is awesome. There is a limitation with this. There's actually a couple. I'm going to tell you what those are right now. One, it is a calculated column. And if you've been working with Power BI for any amount of time, we know that calculated columns are really designed for describing data. Their, their values do not change when you change filters in a report. They are not dynamic like measures. They are static. The value of those calculated columns are decided at runtime. What does that mean? Watch the value of, let's say, California. California has 5.7 million in cells, but that's for all time. That's for all years. What you would expect in a basic report is if I were to click 2007, you would expect this number to change to only 2007. This is basic filter context in Power BI. In fact, if I were to, let's say, just throw a quick little table in here and then we brought in, let's say, the state and then we brought in total sales, which is my sum of Internet sales. And we look at this right here and I remove that 2007 and you look at California, it's 
5.7 million, right? If I add in 2007 and you look at California, it's 1.7 million. It has changed accordingly based on the filter context. That's because total sales is a measure that is evaluated at runtime based on the filters that are applied. But what we've done with this map to make it work, to trick it, is we use a calculated column which is static. Now here's the thing. I am not building map visuals in Power BI every day. I have a lot of other responsibilities with Fabric, with Azure, with Power Apps. So I'm not always inside of Power BI. So maybe there's another way to do this that I'm not aware of. If there is, let us know in the chat window below. Say, hey Mitchell, guess what? You missed it. There's actually a better way to do this. Or maybe there's a custom visual. Or maybe you have a trick that you like that you want to share. Now there's another limitation that I want to talk about. The second limitation is, well, what about, what about city state mitchell i love to drill down in the report i want to go to florida i want to drill down into florida so that i can see the cities within florida and data labels on those well there's not really a practical solution for that if i wanted to do that i would actually have to go into my geography table i'd probably have another column for latitude another column for lat uh, longitude based on all of the different cities I'd have a different column for the sales by city and I'd probably set up two separate maps with a with a bookmark with a button that says view by city view by state something like that and then once you flipped over to that then you could choose the states that you wanted to highlight that would kind of be the workaround I think just thinking out loud but those are going to be your limitations this is an awesome trick I've seen a lot of people use it in practice it is amazing but it unfortunately does have those limitations. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.